there are a lot of IT ops terms floating about at the moment. So you've got DevOps, you've got ML ops, you've got data ops, you've got all these related terms. How does AI ops fit in compared to these other ops things? Well, they all have to do with operations, but different parts of operations. So if you think of DevOps, that is a, uh, a philosophy that says developers, tr- traditionally, when you look at uh, IT services, uh, you had two groups. You had developers who build code, and you had IT operations who ran code. The concept of DevOps is one that says, hey, developers should maintain the code base and the services they build. You build it, you own it. That's the concept of DevOps. Nothing to do with AI. ML ops is nothing to do with IT operations. It's, hey, for machine learning and AI, there's a lot of tooling and operations that needs to happen in order to deliver better uh, ML and AI. So ML ops is a whole branch around tooling and services to, to enable ML and AI developers. AI ops is how do you use AI uh, to scale and automate IT ops. It's a bit of a word salad. There's a lot of jargon out there. It's hard to keep up. Absolutely. So three different related ideas, but for different groups of people then. Absolutely. Okay. So to make this a bit more concrete, can you give us some examples of what an AI ops project might involve? Yeah, of course. So if, if, um, if you think of uh, human IT teams whose job it is to keep digital services running, uh, I, those teams, there can be hundreds, there can be thousands of people in any given enterprise. Uh, their job is to collect lots and lots of data. And that data can live in lots of different silos of the organization. It can be data about the health of your machines and data about the health of your applications and data about the health of your customer experience. And so health of your machines typically lives in a set of data called monitoring or observability data. And so that's lots and lots of software you're using to monitor the health of your uh, servers and networks and storage and cloud and containers, lots and lots of data that lives in lots of different tools that all specialize in monitoring the health of different tiers of your tech stack. Then there's uh, information about the health of your applications. Right, So I've got lots of applications, lots of microservices. They're acting in different ways depending on what's happening. Uh, I have to get that silo of information. Then I have to get silo of information around what's the health of my customer experience. And that just gives me enough information to know, uh, do I have a problem? Right. Then I need to know, well, why do I have this problem? What's the root cause of this problem? And typically, that can happen because... Someone changed something across my enterprise, and it's leading to un, uh, un- unpredictable uh, situations. The problem there is, if I'm a large enterprise, I'm a Fortune, global 2000 company, Fortune 500, there's thousands of people who can be changing lots and lots of things over the last two weeks that may have unintended consequences. Developers who deploy new code, uh, security administrators who change security uh, configurations, IT folks who change infrastructure configurations. 5,000 changes in the last two weeks that could have led to you know, an application not working like it should and delivering a suboptimal c- customer experience. I have to filter through all of those 5,000 changes to figure out which is the one that led to uh, the problem. That's a needle in the haystack issue. Uh, then I have to filter through uh, lots and lots of other data around who did what, who communicated what, have we seen this problem in the past, how did we fix it in the past. And so that's why for human beings today to piece together all of that data in order to get context, it can take hours. Uh, and in a digital world where seconds matter, if you're down for hours, that's very, very bad. You know, there's a special place in hell. Uh, for example, think of airlines. There's this very special place in hell called getting stranded in the airport. And it turns out customers don't like it and they'll punish you for it. 
Uh, if you think of most large airlines, they've got like 50 to 100 critical services that if any one of them is down for more than 10 minutes, they have to ground the entire fleet. And so, you know, on the one hand, you've got 10 minutes to keep this service live and back, and you have to sift through a tsunami of data in order to figure out what's broken, why is it broken, what should I do about it? Uh, AI Ops says, hey, let's piece together all that data. Let's give you full context. Let's give you, we have this concept called full context operations. Let's take all these little silos of data that are, are buried in lots of different places. Let's piece them together and give people full context to do their job, make decisions better, make decisions faster.